The Mojave was now free from the NCR and Legion after the Second Battle of Hoover Dam. It was said that the ghost of the Mojave played a role in helping New Vegas achieve true freedom, but to many, that was just a children's tale. It was true, though. The Mojave had been blessed by the gods with the protector, always unseen by the people. Now, with the war over, it was supposed to be his time to rest. But the Mojave never really rests, does it? Can you beat Old World Blues without being detected? So, let's go over the rules of this challenge. I must never be detected by anyone or anything. We will judge this by the detection meter. Hidden and caution are fine to be in, but detected and danger are not. The detection meter is the final authority on this, no questions. 2. I will be bringing back my character from the original Can You Beat Fallout New Vegas without being detected, so we have some sort of starting point for the DLC. If you're unhappy that I'm not starting a new character for this, oh well. That's really it for the rules. Ready? Let's go. This challenge starts off quite a bit different since I already have a character made and ready. His name is still not Min Squad, because when I made him for the challenge originally, I thought it was funny. We have some decent equipment, like an anti-material rifle with a handful of bullets, a hunting rifle, and some armor that'll do the trick. I also had two stealth boys, and if y'all watched the original challenge, you know that they are direly needed. With my inventory pretty well stocked for this challenge, I approached the satellite and entered Big Mountain. Here I'm greeted with a long, drawn-out movie, and then I awoke in a balcony overlooking the area. Apparently surgery had been done on me, as noted by my character. I entered the sink, and then entered the think tank. Here is where the importance of having a stealth boy shows up. You see, if you have a stealth boy active, and someone initiates dialogue with you while you're sneaking, you remain completely undetected, both going into and out of dialogue down to the frame. For me, that means I'm undetected as long as I'm not the one initiating dialogue with the exception of robots. Since you can activate robots while sneaking to activate dialogue, it's fine as well. And since there are no humans here, I won't have any problems. The doctors of the think tank babbled on for a bit until I decided to skip the majority of their dialogue to continue on with the challenge. It would seem that their old enemy Dr. Mobius is up to his old tricks again, and the think tank has had enough. They wanted me to go around the big empty and locate some items that would allow me to enter the forbidden zone, where no brain has ever entered or ever returned. Except Dr. Mobius, of course. The think tank then mentioned that Mobius had my brain, and that they also removed my spine and heart. This gave me a couple of extra perks, but they weren't that important. I also got the K9000 gun for the fun of it, the sonic emitter which was needed for some of the main quests, and the sync module so I could use the store to buy some basic stuff like ammo. Now that I had all the info I needed, it was time to explore the big empty, and if you've ever played this DLC before, you know what my first stop was. At the X-13 training site, there was a stealth suit that would be very helpful for this challenge. There was also something else, but we'll get to that later. So I started towards X-13 and immediately noticed a problem. The outlying area of X-13 was littered with Night Stalkers and the occasional trauma harness victim. This made actually reaching X-13 a lot harder than it needed to be. I was held up right outside of the entrance by two different packs of Night Stalkers that really didn't want me to reach the stealth suit. Of course, with enough time and patience, I was able to get past them, though it wasn't very fun. The entrance didn't have any enemies to speak of, and acquiring the base stealth suit, which I will now name Debra, was easy. Debra was a sweet suit that had an eye for stealth, and a love of medics that often left me addicted, but she really cared. I wanted what was best for Debra, and I assumed she did too, so I started up some tests that I could take that would increase her sneaking abilities. The first test was to steal some documents from a safe without being detected by the robot patrols. This was a fairly easy test. I grabbed the documents, and with that my suit was upgraded with a higher sneak skill, though my base sneak skill was already maxed, so it really didn't do much for me. I was about to start the second test when something horrible happened. Dr. Mobius had released some of his dangerous Robo-Scorpions into the facility, and they were right outside of the room I was in. Debra was not too happy with this turn of events, as she has entomophobia, the fear of bugs, though I think she is a little confused, as scorpions aren't classified as bugs, I'm pretty sure. I, on the other hand, took it a little better, and was somehow slightly prepared for this, as I had some pulse grenades that I assume I picked up in the Mojave somewhere. This killed the Robo-Brains, which I think counts as cheating during the tests, but I also killed one of the scorpions and damaged the others. When I ran out of pulse grenades, I switched to frag grenades to kill the last scorpion guarding the room, then I made a swift exit and continued on to eliminate the others. I went down the side hallway where I killed a Robobrain and a turret, which saddened Deborah a little bit since they would normally help us defend against attacks, but it really didn't look like they were doing much to help. I had a good angle on the scorpions in the main room now, making them easy to kill using my anti-material rifle. There were still a few upstairs, but they couldn't detect me, so I started taking the tests again. The second test was the same as the first, with the exception of laser tripwires that had been activated. The tripwires were very easy to see, and I can actually disarm them for good with my repair skill. Once again, I got the documents I needed from the safe, and Deborah was upgraded again, this time with plus one perception, which was a nice bonus. 
The third test was the same as the second, but now there were motion sensors that would detect my presence, and if I stayed in the area of one too long, I would fail the test. Once again, I got the documents I needed, and Deborah was ecstatic. Now the suit also had plus one agility, which I'm pretty sure was already maxed out on my character, but oh well. The last test we could take was a little different. I had to deactivate all three robots in the test area without being detected to finish the test. This was a little more difficult than the others, considering it also included lasers and sensors, but it was still a cinch. I also had to kill this last rubber brain, otherwise it would turn around and detect me. With that, Deborah was fully upgraded with some extra sneak movement speed, which was awesome since I'm crouched all the time. I also leveled up to 16 and put points into repair and explosives and picked this silent runner perk so I could walk around real fast without worrying about being detected. Now comes the other reason why I needed to come to X13. You can replay any of the tests again and get some nice rewards, including Stealth Boys, but the Robot Compliance test, the last test, will always give you a Stealth Boy once you complete it. This meant that I now had infinite access to Stealth Boys. I tried to not go overboard with this and only allowed myself to acquire 5 of them, which I thought would be enough. It was now time to leave X13 in favor of going to X8 for some upgrades to the Sonic Emitter, but these things can never be easy, can they? The way out of X13 was now guarded by Robo-Scorpions, which were still relatively difficult to kill with my weapons, including the anti-material rifle, so I donned a stealth boy and was ready to sneak past them, but then I found a surefire way to eliminate them in one shot. Right underneath the bottom of their tail is a weak spot where if I shoot them, they die instantly. This helped me clear out the rest of X13 in case I needed to come back for extra stealth boys later, hopefully we wouldn't have to though. The outside entrance to X-13 was also guarded by Robo-Scorpions, but luckily my stealth boy was still active and I had time to take out the Robo-Scorpions as I saw fit. The next thing I wanted to do was to acquire some of the Sync Personality modules. I figured it would add on to the challenge, and it would be pretty fun in the process. So I hitched a left outside of X-13 and stayed on the boundary of the map while I went to my first targeted area. I ended up at the X-17 Meteorological Station, and when I found it, I was immediately greeted by some trauma harness victims who detected me. Luckily, I had a save that was pretty close by, and I made sure to watch the area where they originally came from when I found the station again. And to my surprise, they spawned out of absolutely nowhere. I tried hiding for a bit so I could take them off one by one, but that didn't work. Thankfully, I didn't actually need to get anything from the meteorological station, so I went back to the think tank to find a different way to go. But I also decided that maybe upgrading the sonic emitter first would be a better idea. So I was off to X8. On the way there, there was nothing. Not a peep. Not a soul. Which is really odd for this DLC. I took it as a sign and entered X8. X8 was guarded by a few Mr. Orderlies who were easy enough to put down with my anti-material rifle. Now I could start the X8 data retrieval tests, which were some of the hardest things that I had to do in this challenge. The first thing I noticed about these tests is that they are much more difficult than the stealth suit ones. For some reason, during those tests, the Robo Brains seemed to have very little perception, but I swear to god that these cyber dogs and turrets were cranked to 11. Every little move I made seemed to set them off, and there were plenty of them around. Of course, with enough time put into anything, you will eventually accomplish it. I just don't like it when it feels like bamboo splinters underneath my fingernails once accomplished. I also had a bug happen here. I'm not sure if it was the turret or the cyber dog, but whenever I rounded the corner of this bookshelf, I would immediately go into danger. I reloaded many, many saves to see if I could bypass this problem, and there was no visible way that I could. I know what some of you might say. I just entered their field of perception, and they detected me, but that's not it either. They also detected me through a stealth boy. I decided to reload a save and do the whole test over, and when I got back to this part, there were no problems at all. This really confused me, but I guess that's New Vegas for you. There was also a problem with one of the lobotomites. It always came running down the stairs as soon as I got close to him, which seemed weird. After a few attempts to get past him, I decided to wait until I was undetected, and that worked out pretty well. I got the rest of the student files I needed, killed some more cyber dogs, and left the test. I had to walk down a hallway and kill a few protectrons to get back to the test terminal, but it wasn't too bad. I started the next test and accidentally picked the wrong one. I wanted to pick the test that would take me to Gabe, the giant cyber dog, but I picked the advanced test instead. I still got to upgrade my sonic emitter to disable force fields though, which was important. After I upgraded the sonic emitter, I went through the test, which was much the same as the last one, except the game didn't tragically break on me. With that test done, I was able to take the test to take me to Gabe, but now that I had the upgraded sonic emitter, I decided to try and finally get some sync personality modules. There was one located right next to X8, though the way was blocked, by nothing. Literally, there was no one here at all, but I was being put into danger. I fixed this by traveling to the think tank and then traveling back. I'm not sure why the detection meter is so broken in Old World Blues, but oh well. When I entered the Y-17 medical facility, I ran into another problem. I was yet again instantly detected. Through a door, by a robot on the second floor. Even with a stealth boy, it would detect me instantly. At this point, I was extremely frustrated because I really wanted to get all the sync personality modules, but it was now looking like I wouldn't be able to do it. 
I mean, I could just look up where every single one was located and grab it without the use of a map, but like I said, I was a little pissy, so I ended the search before it really even started. Now I could either go back to X8 to finish up the quest with Gabe there, or I could go to X2 and grab the antenna. I decided to head to X2 since I just got done with some X8 quests prior. Lucky for me, there is a pipe right outside of the think tank that takes me directly to X2. All I had to do was follow it and deactivate the occasional frag mine, and I was there before I knew it. The inside was guarded by a few protectrons that thankfully didn't have godlike perception. I was up top with the antenna in my hands when some robo-scorpions spawned below the tower. I imagined that there would be some inside of the building too, so I went with a very old tactic. Jump off the antenna and save mid-fall. When you load that save, it starts the velocity of the jump over again so you can fall gently like a spring breeze. With that done, I was out of X2 sites and the Robo-Scorpion sites. Back at X8, I initiated the test that I needed to and was greeted by Gabe. Normally I kill Gabe, but I figured why kill him when I can be stealthy, so I used one of my few remaining stealth boys and started to look through Gabe's digging spots. I found it in one of the last ones I checked, and with the stealth boy still active, I left X8 and was greeted by some Robo-Scorpions. Once there, I used one of my stealth boys and returned to Dr. Klein. He took a look at one of the technologies I grabbed, Deborah the Stealth Suit, and was able to net me the access codes to get into the Forbidden Zone so I could take care of Dr. Mobius. I left for the Forbidden Zone, which wasn't too far away from the Think Tank. I made my way through the canyon area with these giant gems and arrived in no time. The entrance to Mobius's lair was guarded by, you guessed it, giant robo-scorpions. I tried to kill them a couple of times, but decided to use a stealth boy to just run past them. This could have been a huge mistake, as I now only had one stealth boy left, and if I couldn't talk to Dr. Mobius while I was still active, I would have to go back to X13 and grab another one so I could talk to Dr. Klein later. Once I was inside, I was greeted by a huge robo-scorpion, which must have had a terrible perception, as I was able to shoot it and have it immediately go back to undetected a few seconds later, so it was a very easy fight. I stealth walked as fast as I could up to the stairs to Dr. Mobius' place and entered. Dr. Mobius was totally tripping, just like me. We had a great little conversation about my brain, and I decided not to kill him because that would be kinda mean, honestly. Instead, I went over to my brain and talked to him. Or me, I guess. He was a righteous little asshole, but once I flirted with him, he was totally ready to get back inside me. He also mentioned that the Think Tank's doctors were not going to let us leave Big Mountain easily, as they wanted my brain so they could escape themselves. This was a big no-no, so I grabbed my brain and prepared for a battle. Once I was back at the think tank, I donned my last stealth boy and made my way to talk to Dr. Klein before the fight in case I could ignore fighting them altogether. That apparently wasn't on the table since my speech was horrendous, so it was time to fight funny brains and jars. The first attempt was pretty bad since I was rather close to them from the dialogue I initiated, but the next few attempts were much better. I could easily one-shot most of them with an armor-piercing round and some psycho, and before I knew it, they were all dead, and I beat Old World Blues without ever being detected. I'm going to say that this challenge was just about as hard as the original, and it was pretty fun, as this is a pretty fun DLC. Try it out and let me know how it goes for you. I'm just a little sad that I couldn't get all of the Think Tank personality modules, as that would have made for a really fun challenge, but you win some, you lose some. If you enjoyed, go ahead and subscribe and like, as that helps me out bunches. Don't forget to watch some of my other challenges, including beating Fallout New Vegas without being detected. I'm sure you'll like it. Also, make sure to check out Min Squad's channel since he's the reason I'm doing things like this in the first place. I'll leave a link to that below, as well as links to my Discord and Patreon. Come join the fun. Thank you to my patrons, Riley, Jamie, and Untamed Pineapple. Y'all are the best. And until next time, stay safe out there, and peace out.